Welcome to Fashion Talks. These are our two new models that have joined us for this segment of Fashion Talk. We are so delighted to have them here. And we are, we're so delighted to have them here. And uh, we have Paige here. Um, Paige, like she says, the mother of two. And then we have, um, and she's also a waitress, bartender. And then we have Danico. Danico is with Heyman Talents Agency, and he is also a professional model. So let's give it up for them. We're so excited to have them here while they sit here drinking their wine. Um, we're going to have a special guest today. We're going to do it a little bit different. Um, we're not going to really stay on topic, but we're going to have a person um, that's going to be joining us after we show you some of our products here from um, Fashion Talks, the Vine Lux, our products. And um, the person that we're going to interview today, I'm so excited. He's one of my idols, and I've been watching him through the years, and I'm just so excited to have him on our show. And we're going to get into the nitty-gritty of a lot of things because his resume is long as heck. So we'll be back. Um, tune in. Of course, the show is being brought to you by Divine Lux Clothing and Apparel. And we want you to go shop online. Every week we come on bringing you new looks so that you can um, be chic, so you can be different, original, and of course, at a great price. So, today's show is going to be a little different. A little different. We're going to have, um, of course, we're going to talk about some of the accessories that you can get here. We have a nice special guest. Of course, you're going to get your fashion fix. And I think the fashion, is the fashion doctor here today? The fashion doctor is sick. He's sick, see, COVID. Yeah, he's Make sick. sure you wear your mask, yeah, man. That's why I'm looking okay. away from you. Six feet is important, <laughs> people. <laughs> Yeah, so make sure you wash those little nasty hands of yours and quit touching everything, you know, like down there and up there. So make sure that you wash your hands crazy, and use your, your hand sanitizer because guess what? If you don't, you're spreading germs to other people. So let's get on with the show. Okay, so my big thing is Valentine's Day is coming up. Yes, it is. And I, I have no heart. No, yeah, no, me. Boy, no yeah, me, me neither, Queen. But you know, some people do. Some people have love. And we're single out here. Well, are you single all day? Yes, I'm single. Me too. I'm living the single, single, single life. I'm more of, if you want it, then you should have put a ring on it. I'm just saying. <laughs> Forget that. If you want it, you need to put a ring on it. Ain't nobody waiting around for nobody. Right. But for real though, 
Valentine's Day is coming up and so we have a couple of ideas of some things that you can get your significant other for Valentine's Day. And yes, it's early. We, we Look, the stimulus checks drop. You can go ahead and secure the present that, you know, it's going to really make your sweetheart be, um, feel amazing. Did you get your $600? No, I didn't get mine. Don't oh, my God. Oh, but some God. people got theirs. Apparently, everybody got theirs but me. Oh. Did you get yours? Yes, almost gone. But I'm going to Florida tomorrow. Almost gone. Oh, it's going to be gone tomorrow, baby. Because I'm going to Florida. I'm you going, going to, to Florida the... with your child? Baby, but I'm here to tell you. I need to get up out of Cincinnati and wear me some divine luck. Didn't fashion on the beach. Didn't even invite to take me. Didn't even invite to I take me. I saw you next time. I ain't getting my check, though. It's okay. And maybe Valentine's, somewhere during that time, we can go to Miami and, and maybe we might find some booze on the beach. Booze on the beach. Booze on the beach. <laughs> Girl, if he on the beach, I don't know if I trust him. It's like, nah. But for real, buy 99, y'all. It's a great gift for a king. Let me tell you, it's nothing like meeting a man and he walked past you and he has a bomb scent. Like his scent is, bruh, it just captures you. That's like, he walked past me, I'm going to eat him. You know, <laughs> it ain't nothing, you know what's good food when you can smell it, right? So right, right, right. this is available and we also have um, the, the other one that's blue. Um, okay. They're available for $150. If you're interested, please log on or cash app us um, and let us know that you want to get this for your significant other. It makes an amazing gift. We also have purses for the ladies. Purses for the ladies. A lady is always happy if you get her a bag. If you don't got a bag, the best thing you can do is get her a bag. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is a nice bag. It's red. Um, it has some colors in it. I love the yellow that's in it because Yellow is one of my favorite colors. And then also, come, well, this is the whole yellow bag. And then this one is the pink bag. And the chain, berry. you have two ways of carrying this mm -hmm. bag. This you one got the chain. Three. You got three ways. Jeez, three ways. No, not the three way three ways. You hear me? <laughs> Three ways of carrying it, and Three the ways. prices vary depending on the design that you get. So if you're interested, just go onto the website, okay? That's right. You see, we also have the traveling bag as well that you can get. She's going to be traveling. She might want to get the traveling bag. We have headbands and sunglasses. Of course, to get shady, especially when you're traveling. Can we you have different the headbands, ones. The headbands. The sunglasses that are big or 20 and the smaller glasses are 15. If you want one, you can get them. Again, all you have to do is cash app the one that you like. And then you said show the headband, sis. Well, look. They have the smaller one. Adorable. And then they have the real thick one. How much are they? Uh, the headbands, they run uh, various prices. We have some that are 15. Okay. Headbands, and then we have some that are, well, the smaller 15 and the large are 20. 20. Okay. So if you're interested in any of these, please make sure. Again, you log on and purchase, or you can cash out your purchase at the link in the description. Anything else we have? Oh, hats. You want to walk Oh, around? we have hats as well, but we're going to show you those later. I'm ready for the special guest. Are you you're ready, ready for the special guest? Yes, we're ready for the special guest. We're going to have, well, we'll wait. We'll be back. We'll tell you this in a moment. Hi and welcome back. I am Londe and I was assisted here with the host Queen Ebony J. Today we're so excited to have our special guest here today. Um, he's been from, uh, I, I can't even begin to tell you or begin to start um, where um, we're going to, we're, we're just going to be all over the place. This is his day. This is his day. This is his time. And we're going to mix it in with some serious stuff going on. And we have some things that's going to, we're going to start from the beginning and we're going to go to the end. So I want you guys to give it up, to be excited while we drink wine with Ronald Comments. Come on out, Rondo. All right. Have a glass of wine with me. We're going to cheers. Oh, oh, should you want to take a jacket off? Because it might get hot up in here. You may want to take that jacket off. You know I'm a fool. I'm silly. <laughs> he said a little steamy. And you're used to it. 
right? He said he's good. He's used to it because he's been all over the world doing just everything. Anyway, let's toast before we get started. And I want the audience to feel free if you have any questions that you want to ask, if you want to um, post it and comment on it on the live um, taping of the show. And hopefully we'll get him to answer some questions or give you some, you know, give you some feedback from what we're doing, what we're discussing at this moment. All right, let's get started. So who is Ronald Cummings? That's what we want to know. Who are you? I'm the man on a mission. Yes. <laughs> That's a big question. No, no. A best-selling author, entrepreneur, film producer. Uh, man, what more? Philanthropist. You name it. It's a small town city guy. Oh, okay. okay. So, small town city guy <laughs> in the city of Cincinnati. All right. So, this is what we're going to start with. Um, you know, I follow you through the years, so I know some of the things that you do. Um, I've been around, um, we've even connected and communicated on the phone at various times in your life during some part one way or the other. We're going to start off with, uh, what were you like as a kid? I was, man, I was a sweet gentle butterfly. That's <laughs> what you say. I was, just like I am now. Okay. Yeah. okay. I'm even more a sweet gentle butterfly now, but now, you know, I'm, I grew up, uh, I grew up real rough. I had a really rough childhood that, uh. A really rough childhood, man, that really kind of created the blueprint for my life. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see what else. I guess, guess I can start with conception. I was conceived by rape. Uh, my father was a, a Black Panther in the 60s. They ended up getting addicted to heroin and crack. Uh, so, you know, of course, seeing my mom and decided to have his way. So I was conceived. Then I got adopted at the age of five. Uh, adopted to a man that uh, was 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 really uh, mentally unstable itself. So the abuse started at the age of five. He would beat me till, like literally until my, till my skin cracked and I bled. Uh, found my biological father at the age of 12. I did my first robbery with my daddy at 12. That left the man dead. Uh, from there, street life was pretty much my way of survival. So so that was your way of survival. So that's that's what you grew up with. That's what you you. you to in, to deal with um, and overcome some things, I'm sure. So we know, and and some people know that you've been in the joint. So we're going to take it from you being, you know, in your adolescent, doing the things that you said with your father, as far as Robbie leaving a man dead, um, and then you went to jail. Tell us a little bit about that when you went to prison. I want to know what impact in prison when you got out to get you started or does it have any connection in getting you started to where you are now? Uh, well, how I went to prison was, uh, it wasn't a drug case, but it was drug related. Okay. So I'm quite sure some of your, your viewers are familiar with setup girls. Uh, <laughs> What's setup girls? Tell us. You need to learn that. Well, something we used to do in the streets, right? Was, you know, we, if it was a dude we wanted to rob, you know, we, we get the, you know, the, the big booty chick, the pretty smile. You know, send her up in the club to go flirt with him. You know what I'm saying? And she taking him back to the hotel or she going to his crib. And basically, you know, once they get all posted up and everything, she shoot that text back. Uh, and then, you know, we kick in the door and, you know, wave that thing and we rob him. So, but I became the, the, uh, the person that was actually set up. I was walking downtown through the smokestacks, seeing, you know, this big booty and, you know, cute smile. She flirting with me. So it went down from there. Kicked it for a couple of months. So next thing you know, I guess it was time for her to check it in. So the dudes that set her up to, to uh, from, you know, to, to set me up, they uh, they robbed me for a couple of keys of coke, uh, forty five thousand dollars cash, mm -hmm. uh, some guns, jewelry, you know, stuff like that. Did you have any indication at all that something was suspicious about this girl? Was she really involved? Did she like you or? Yeah, she actually ended up catching feelings for me, so she didn't really even want to go through with it. Okay. Uh, so they, they whole little plan had changed because initially the plan was they were supposed to, um, she was supposed to unlock the door, you know, get me right first, right? You know what I'm saying? Sex or whatever. Uh, I might do drugs or nothing. So, and then, uh, she go unlock the door and they were supposed to come in, uh, kill me, steal my safe, you know what I'm saying? Get the dope and everything, but. You're the big baller. I mean, it wasn't like that, but we used to move weight around from, from, uh, to Canton, Ohio. Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? We we used to get busy. 
So she ended up catching feelings, though, so she couldn't go along with that plan. So, so she, they ended up changing it up. I used to get my Coke from these Coke boys in Indianapolis. I just came back, so I had three keys of Coke packed up under the truck. And I had uh, I had an AR-15, a Glock 380, and, uh, and my 240 automatics in the truck. And I had a, a 45,000 cash in, my, in the spare tire. So she ended up setting that thing where they, they was able to get access to everything, right? So it avoided them killing me. That's what she didn't want. But at the same time, somebody had to get got. So after that went down, I, we found her a couple of days. Not about a week later, we found her, you know, kidnapped her to make her tell me I wanted to know where these dudes was at. So she ended up setting them up, some dudes from Avondale. So we go through there, you know what I'm saying, the location where, where she said they was at, kick in the dough, put that, you know, put that 40 on them. And we took them out to the same spot we had her at. So I got charged with three counts of kidnapping and, and, and attempted murder and felonious assault. So the, the reason why I got charged with the attempted murder was because I was pistol whipping one of the dudes. Like, we never did nothing to the girl. Okay. But the dudes, though, somebody had to pay. Because, like, I ended up finding my truck. And sure enough, my truck was actually behind a building where they was at. So, but everything was gone by then. I'm pistol whipping a guy, and my gun accidentally go off. So I shot him, you know, I, I hit him through the leg. Wasn't that big of a deal, though. You know what I'm saying? A little flesh wound, but... Like, whenever you go to the hospital, to university hospital for, like, stab wounds or gunshots, they automatically want to take a police report. Like, I've been shot twice, and I'm just like, you know, it was a straight bullet. I don't know. But they end up giving all my information, the dudes, the thugs, the guys that actually set me up to get robbed. Yeah, 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 the ill niggas. So they gave all my information and everything, so that's how it went down. Okay. Do you see her to this day? So the funny thing is, she actually is you know got away from that life. She's not from Cincinnati, but she got away from that life and went to uh, I think Acting University uh, for psychology, psychology, okay. something like that. But anyway, so she's a uh, uh, she's a counselor. Uh, so it's trying to turn your life around. Yeah, just like yourself, just like yourself. So when you was in prison, um, most people have a mentor while they're there, someone that kind of tell them like. Um, I believe in you, my brother. When you get out of here, you know, uh, uh, I want, I, want I, I see good in you. Did you have a mentor that you was there? So, because when you came out, is when you start launching most of the things that you're doing now. Did you have a mentor? Nah, I ain't never had a mentor. Even in, in prison, you didn't have one? Nah, we fought a lot in there. So, it definitely, I ended up having to fall back from everybody. Like, it was, so one day I went to the library when I was, went out in the population. Mm hmm I'm just going to get some books to take back to my cell. And I found a book, and it was a name dictionary book. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, as a kid, I, I changed my name to Diamond, which is the name of my book and the name of my Netflix deal, right? So, like, because I, I hated the name Ronald. But then all of a sudden I find this, this, this well, for one, the way I grew up, you know what okay. I'm saying? I mean, like, so I had a lot of self-hatred, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I took this this name dictionary book back to my cell, and then of course I'm, I want to see what Ronald means. I'm just kind of you know humoring myself, and I, when I seen that it meant king, mighty ruler, that changed my whole perspective on life. At that moment, I was like, hold on, man, I, like I don't. This is not going to be the story for the rest of my life. Like I knew I I, I was meant for something great. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started following back from a lot of the homies. You know what I'm saying? Stuff that they was involved in fights, like a big fight where I broke out against uh, Cleveland, some Cleveland niggas. And I'm like, man, I'm cool on y'all. You know what I'm saying? But it caused a lot of people, a lot, a lot of guys from the city, though, from Cincinnati, because now they starting, you know what I'm saying, to have beef with me because I don't want to get involved. But I'm like, I'm trying to stay away from all this bullshit because I was on a, a, on a, a, a just, I had a different perspective, man. I, I knew I wanted to do something great with my life, and I didn't want to end up in prison for the rest of my life. So I knew I had to separate myself. Well, let me tell you this. I remember reading an article about you and my brother was incarcerated and I'm like, who is this guy? And my sister was like, oh, that's that one guy that got that store downtown, da, 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 da. So I read the article about you and my brother was in the shoe at that time. So I cut the article out because I wanted to make sure that he utilized his thought process positively and let him know there is hope out there. So I cut the, the news um, clipping out, folded it up, put it in an envelope, and I sent it to him in Dayton Correction, Correctional He then, I guess, in the in there, they kind of pass it somewhere on the floor. I don't know how they do it, but they get, the, you know, they were able to get the article to other guys and they read it. 
And it was just really, it, I, I loved it. I loved it when I read the article. It was a big article. It wasn't a small piece of paper. It was like almost half of the page um, about you. And you had a shoe or a, a shoe line or clothing line of the sort. Tell us a little bit about, about that because that that's fashionable. You were in fashion. So when I was in the joint, um, I got into an altercation with, a, with the police, with the CO, and they put me in a hole. Okay. So they, I had to go through an LC. I had to go to Loop. I was in a hole in Loop for six months, which was cool because it was there where I discovered this, you know, desire to be a fashion designer, right? Like I never thought about it in my life, but I always had art skills. So I actually designed this shoe line, C-Town. I designed that when I was in a hole in, in Loop, and... I knew that that was going to be something that was going to make me a lot of money. Uh, then I started drawing, you know, different designs as far as clothes and logos and stuff like that. And I said, this is it. it what did C-Town say? Basically Cincinnati. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then, but I also launched C-Town in Cleveland and Chicago as well. So I had a C-Town shoe in all three cities. And then when I started getting rappers like Young Bird, uh, you know, and a lot of other rappers, man, that, you know, from different cities that started with school, Young Bird from, from uh, Chicago. And it just really blew up for me. So initially, though, I was actually, when I when I first uh, started it, I did a big production in China. So when I got the order, I was just selling them out the trunk of my car. You know, I mean, I'm a hustler, so I'm going to move weight. But then, next thing I know, I go on the finish line one day, and I got a pair on. And the manager was like, man, I'm seeing everybody with these shoes on. Like, where y'all getting them from? So I played like it wasn't mine. I was like, yeah, some dude was selling them out of his, his car. And he was like, man, he said... He like, you know who do what it is? Like, man, you know, you know his info. I said, yeah, I got his number. So, uh, so I gave him the number, which was my number, of course. He calls Finish Line, the corporate office in Indianapolis. A guy named Israel called me up. They buyer there called me up and was like, hey, can we meet with you? Can you come to Indianapolis and uh, you know talk about your shoe line? Went there like two days later, signed a distribution deal with them. He had me in the malls, all in the windows, and you know, with the Sea Town and everything. That's so, what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. We're going to have more from Ronald Simmons. We're going to come back. We're going to get a little bit deeper in our conversation. Stay tuned, and we look forward to you coming back with us. We'll be back two and two, y'all. And we're back here at Divine Lux Clothing. This is Fashion Talk, where we wind down every single Wednesday. And I hope you're ready for your fashion fix. I'm Miss Ebony J, the queen that does the most for you. And, of course, we're going to kick it back to line day and get back to learning more about Mr. Ronald. But first, is you ready for this fashion fix? Get those cash apps ready. If you see something you like, all you have to do is cash app what you like, your size, with your phone number. So that way... We can call you when your order is ready Okay, I'm bringing out my first queen Come on out, beautiful She is rocking and fabulous Two-piece Work it Ooh, look at that So give us the numbers what, how, Which number is for the two-piece? Number 16 it, In the, the jacket is number 16 So if you like this jacket Seeing this look Of course it's cold, right? You want this? Come on and walk. Let them see you. You can get the jacket. That's number 16. And the two pieces, what number? Number three. That's right. That two piece can be yours. If you're going on a nice staycation, vacation, you want to look fashionably fit, or maybe you want on a nice day, this is the one you bust out with. Nice little coat. Oh, look at the back. Okay, if you want it, you can get it. Again, it's a two-piece. It looks like a three-piece. Three little parts to go along with it. So you can even take that top off, too. Again, that's number 16 for the jacket and number three for the three-piece. Look, I'm about to say two-piece. Three-piece, okay? Thanks, beautiful. If you like them, again, sing your size. You ready, sir? Come on in. What you got for us? Look at this shirt. We matching. Come on, work the wrong way. Come on through. Yes, you want him to look a little nice. Fellas, you looking for something? You want to bring a nice little staff? Step out. Come in the office. You know, we be on Zoom, right? This is the perfect one on a Friday. What? Bling, bling. What's the number? So number 20. If you like it, you can get it. And the pants, too. Oh, my goodness. Look at the pants. Oh, walk back up there. Let's see these pants. Yes, I told you, Divine Lux 
clothing and apparel has all of your favorites, right? The pants, the tops, you can get them both here. And what number for the pants? Number 10. If you like them, go ahead and send that cash out with your size. Again, this amazing top is available. It has a nice, nice feel to it. Mm. Fellas, this is the one top. Yes. 20 and number 10. Come on, beautiful, what you got? Ooh. You know how I am about showing up with the jacket. This is the jacket you show up with. Yes, what number is the jacket if we like the jacket? Is so if you like the jacket, it's not so we can see the jacket. Oh, she done took the jacket off. Uh-oh. What we got up and underneath here? This is the jacket. If you like it, you know this type of sleeve bar, right? Ooh, bam. This is another three-piece. You see how it fits? So, of course, you might just want to... Definitely, this is a Miami vacation trip, okay? Definitely on somebody's beach. Work it. What number is this for the... Okay, so if you like this three-piece set, that's... Five. And if you like the jacket, maybe you can get number 80. Yes, queen. We appreciate you. Don't we? If you like those looks again, go ahead and cash app it. Cash app your size as well. You ready, King? What you got? Come on. Okay. I like those pants. Okay. Okay. Something different, right? You see, when, when your pants doing everything, all you need is a simple top. He's working at what number is those pants? Number 12. I love it. Multiple designs. It's just popping out fashion. I'm not even a fashion person, but if Shorty walked in like this, I would know my game got to be right all the time, okay? Number 12, if you like it again, Cash App is your size, and this one can be yours. Thanks, Cancel. What we got next? Oh, come on, beautiful. I like that jacket. Okay, so you're working two pieces for us. Again, this is a nice jacket you can wear out actually to go with your outfit or just because it's a little chilly out right now what size is what number is this jacket 89 if you like this jacket send us your size you can get that one today and what about this two piece walk them down so they can see it what number is that two piece number two yeah so you know maybe he need to read a little bit more this is the perfect one for him. He gonna really, really, really be reading, okay? Yes, what number is that one again, two? 89 and two. If you like this two-piece, send us your size. And if you like that jacket, you can get that one, too. Number again, 89. Yes, I think I want that one for myself. I want that one for myself. Yes, thanks, beautiful. Who else is coming on now? Yes. Okay. Okay. So you got a couple things on. Let us know which one. I have number, 67 number sixty-seven for the purse. You know you how you just go out and you don't really want to have everything. This is the perfect one. Let's walk it up. Walk it up. Walk it up. Boom. It goes multiple things because again, it's so cute and colorful. Now go ahead. Let's see what else you got. Oh. Coat, you can get this coat. It is warm. Number 15. Again, send us your size. And this one can go right out to you. And then I see again, number 15. If you like this coat, it feels so warm. Okay, and what's number 19? Yes, okay, go ahead and walk up. Let's see that. And so it's again it covers the back, open in the front. You can wear with some shorts, you can wear with some pants, or how she did it, some nice distressed jeans. Loving it, beautiful. Thank you again. If you see anything you like, once again, go ahead and cash app us. You can get it today. Ooh, come on out, beautiful. You working this two piece. Come on in. Go ahead and show them what you're working with. What number is this one if they want it? 34. Maybe you don't have any big plans. You just want to chill and look nice. This is the one, isn't it? Aren't you comfortable? Okay. 
Yes, okay. Thank you so much. Number again, 34. Finish your size and it can be yours. And we have one more coming on out. Yes, our CEO. How you doing, Miss Kim? Hey. What you working with this two-piece? That's number 90. Isn't this orange nice? Mm-hmm. You don't even think about the Bengals, do you? Because we got the blue. Okay. What's number 11? The shoes. Oh, my goodness. The soldiers, these accessories, we are not playing this year. Number 11, if you want these beautiful shoes, they can be yours. Walk up so they can see them, Miss Kim. Yes. I need those. Comfortable, shiny. Yeah, you can dress down anytime when you're going to put something on like that. Okay, so again, if you like this two-piece, that's 90. And if you like the shoes, that's number 11. Send us your size and it can be yours today. Thanks, beautiful. Okay, and this one right here, this beautiful dress. Maybe you have something where fun to go. Or you just want to look nice, you know? Because we don't dress up anymore since quarantine, right? Well, this dress is available. It's number 45. If you want it, you can get it today. Send us your size. It fits nice. I was very comfortable in it. It's long, so I feel comfortable all the way. Even when I'm sick, everything's covered. If you like it again, you can get it today, number 45. This is Fashion Talk. That is your fashion fix. We're coming back with more, but right now I'm going to kick it back to my co-host, Lon Day, as we continue to learn more about Mr. Ronald Hummings. Fashion Talk again being brought to you by Divine Lux Clothing and Apparel. Hi, we're back, and thank you for joining us here at Fashion Talk, Divine Lux, Fashion and Apparel, and today's special guest, we have Ronald Hammonds. Um, Our last, where we left off at was how Ronald Hammonds got into the fashion industry, and he told us a little bit about when he was um, incarcerated, and that he uh, went to the library and got some information and ended up getting his you know, producing his own sneaker and, and so on and so forth. And you also was going to come out with your own clothing line, too, at one time. I think when I talked to you, you were going to do a fashion show or something inside your store or something like that. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, after the um, the shoes really blew up for me and it was really popular, I decided to add the apparel to it. So we just did a whole full clothing line, the Seatown Apparel um, and Ohio Home Apparel. Something happened during the course of you launching your clothing line. And as we were talking, you said to me you had to shut a lot of things down. And I want to say, if you know, we, we're going to go back. We're going to go back to June 19, 2015. Take us back to that moment. Take us back where your life, what... What happened in your life? Tell the audience what happened in your life that changed that changed you. So June nineteenth, two thousand fifteen, I was in a meeting. I had just uh, launched an energy drink called Jetty Juice. Uh, Facebook page is Jetty Juice Brands. Um, so yeah, so I had just launched my my uh, my Jetty Juice, and I signed a huge distribution deal with GNC okay. that was going to make me rich. So I was in a meeting with my sales director, and I get a phone call from my daughter, and she's crying, telling me that my son. she thought that my son had just got shot. So I called his aunt and asked her, like, you know, what's going on? She said, yeah, he was just shot by the police, and he also had shot an officer. So Who was that officer? Sonny Kim. Sonny Kim. If you recall, it was, it was national news, Sonny Kim. He lost his battle with PTSD and depression. PTSD. And, 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 and tell us a little bit about what PTSD is. So basically, it's a rewiring of your brain, basically. And, and our, our bodies are naturally wired to create survival skills. Uh, but when you start to deal with a lot of trauma in your life, you know, like abuse and things like that, uh, it'll wire you in a, in a way to where uh, a lot of your behavior can be a little toxic. So my son, he grew up in a really abusive environment. Um, I tried to get custody of him twice. And 
his mom, you know, was addicted to drugs, uh, crack, cocaine, and alcohol. And she was married to a guy that also did crack. Uh, he was abused a lot. Uh, there was a lot of domestic violence in the home. And at the age of nine, I tried to, I filed for custody for him. And, and uh, you know, at the age of nine, when I filed for custody, I was a successful entrepreneur. Um, I had a lot of, you know, really great things going for myself. So I really thought it was going to be, a, you know, a really easy cakewalk. Uh, but the judge decided to leave my son in this environment that was violent, drug infested and toxic instead of putting him with his father that was a successful entrepreneur. Had a, you know, I was in, in everything from uh, Essence magazine, like, I mean, every, all the, 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 the print ass that was out there, I was in for my success story. So now my son is forced to grow up in this environment and, you know, he started battling depression and PTSD at a really young age and he lost his battle with it when he turned 21. I read in the article that it stated that your son asked the police officer to shoot him. What was that about? I mean, they received a phone call and apparently him and his girlfriend had got into an altercation and he had a weapon on him. And when the police arrived and your son, I, I can't pronounce it, Trapier? Yeah, I said it right. Trapier apparently asked Sonny Kim to shoot him. Was he trying to be out of his misery? What, what made him click? And you know what? You're right. They said they believe it was a murder-suicide that he wanted to take place but that didn't happen what ended up happening well he was uh first you know he fired he only had a couple of bullets in his gun he didn't go out with like a full arsenal uh so it wasn't a, no intent to kill cops Maybe he had six. yeah he had six bullets in his gun so like i said he, he fired a couple of shots in the air and he was actually yelling kill me kill me mm -hmm. and unfortunately you know one of the shots that he ended up sh uh, firing excuse me, towards the direction of Sonny Kim, had hit Sonny Kim in his um, the upper torso, like towards his arm. And my son you know, got shot, uh, shot multiple times as well. That had to be devastating for you because now not only have you lost your son, the community is looking at you. Did you feel like you were a failed father? Did you feel like everyone was going to turn against you? What were you feeling at that moment? Or as time progressed, because I, I remember seeing you on TV and I remember seeing people holding hands and you guys were like in a half, like in a circle and y'all were praying. This was on the news. And um, I was like, oh, my goodness, you know, like this just did not happen. And it was you, especially when you see someone is trying to make a difference in, in not only your life and other people's life. And then something like this happened that had to be devastating to you. So so how have you felt? the public has treated you since that happened? It was kind of ill, man, because I, I've, I've done so many great things in the city and I've added a lot of value to the city. Matter of fact, probably a lot of your viewers have benefited, maybe not directly, but, you know, their uncles, their fathers, their brothers. I created Vision Caretakers, Inc. It's the first entrepreneurial college that I, and I launched that inside the Ohio prisons. The first prison I launched it in was, uh, was Lebanon. Um, and from there, I mean, we just went on it. We created over 300 entrepreneurs, inmates, guys that were doing that were doing time that didn't know what they were going to do when they came up from prison. Now running successful uh, um, electrical companies, landscape companies. Um, so I, I've done a lot of things to add a lot of value to the city. Then I create, I, I produced the film Think. I shot that inside the Ohio prisons, Cincinnati Public Schools, uh, Princeton City School District, man, Cincinnati Hills Christian Academy. And I'm naming all these schools because I got receipts. They all bought my film for twenty seven thousand dollars. They use it for the full school year. The Cincinnati police also use my film uh, to have and impact. Ones, and, and yeah. Ones we're having issues with. So this was my, another issue because not only Cincinnati police, but the Hamilton County Juvenile Probation Department also bought my film. So Hamilton then the building, 800 building is where I was fighting for custody for my son. So in the same building, I was fighting for custody, trying to save my son. They yeah, using my product. Yeah. They using my product to save other kids. Save other kids. But so they after, couldn't save you to save your son. Well, they could, they wouldn't well, give him. Yeah. So come June 19, 2015. Yeah. A lot of people, I got a lot of death threats. Uh, from all over the city, you know, people were inboxing me. It's this crazy shit. 
Um, I also got death threats from some police officers. And I'm like, wait a minute, y'all are coming to me like this could have been prevented. And that was the, the only point that I had been trying to make from day one. See, Child Protective Services and Juvenile Courts failed my son. Not only him, but they failed so many other African-American children because African-American children fall through the cracks of Child Protective Service at a 73, 73% higher rate than any other ch child. So my, my whole, what, I, what I did in the beginning was I hired some attorneys to get the documents. I wanted to be able to show two times I filed for custody for him. I wanted to also show that his mom had 22 Child Protective Service cases on her. And you still don't give me my son. So after that, that's when the retaliation started. It seems like it seems like you're always fighting a, ba a battle. Like you're always defending yourself because you also had your name slandered um, with the Arthur Ramona. Is it Ray Ramona Felder? Um, she wrote a book, and then I remember myself seeing this on Facebook where there was a dialogue going back and forth. And by me knowing who he is, I didn't know her, but by me knowing of him and who he is and what he stands for, I felt like I had to step in and say, Ronald, don't go there. Don't do that. And this was also in reference to a book. What happened? What happened? Because it seemed like it took you out of your character. You must have, I mean, you probably was up to here in your wits. Yeah, lightweight. Uh, the, the, she, so let's go back a little bit. I'm just going to keep it real brief. This was a young lady that, uh, you know, hit me up. She bought my book, uh, took a picture of it, you know, while she was in the bookstore with it. And, you know, talked about how I was an amazing man. And Ronald Thomas, you know, admired, admired my book and admired the work that I was doing. Uh, so I ended up linking up with her and I signed the book for her. She wanted me to mentor her. Um, and that was pretty much it. So in the course of mentoring her, she wanted to do what I do. She wanted to be an author. She told me, like, I want to be an author. I want to be a speaker. Would you help me? So I did. Uh, so what did, you have her, what did she have to offer? Uh, did she have a platform? Was she marketable? But, but that's just it. She, there, so she didn't have any platform. And I told her, first, you need a platform. Okay. Like, I've been doing this for years now. I mean, I spent 15 years building my platform. Okay. Uh, so, was, you know, my platform is very well established. So I got a lot of experience with doing it. So I came to her with an idea. I had an, I had an idea for a book. I said, if you want to be an author, I said, I got an idea for a book. The title is Black and Ugly as Ever, However. And the reason why I, I came up with that name, because I was driving down the street and, of course, the Biggie song come on. And when I heard it and I got to thinking about how dark skinned she was, I was like, damn, this might be a good title for the book. But we used the however to be the turnaround piece, the, you know, the overcoming piece. So I asked her to give me a few lines of, you know, from her, her life story or whatever. So I can include it in what we already have from was another story. Were interested? Was it interesting enough for you to set up a platform in order for her to? No, to be honest it it, it wasn't. Uh, I mean, she had a pretty, good, you know, pretty decent life, a pretty good life. Uh, so it really wasn't much there as far as to really write about. So I actually created. Uh, we, you know, we created uh, the majority of the story was, you know, was just uh, fiction. Uh, but then over the course of me, you know, trying to, you know, be friends with a mentor. I just noticed a lot of things that I I, I didn't want to take with me. Like I, I'm really careful about people that I, you know that I deal with because of the people that that's in my life and in my circle now. Did you all have a relationship? No, we never had. No, we never I we never had. A, well, she had a boyfriend, and her boyfriend was a Cincinnati police officer at the time. She wanted more. She wanted a relationship. I didn't. Uh, after the death of my son, I was clear. I I, I have I've been single. I don't even date for one. Uh, so let me clear that up. Like I haven't dated in, in a long time, and I was I, I'm clear with, with with females up front. I don't want a relationship because right now I'm working on creating this you know this bill and this policy. Yeah. So that's all. I, she she was cool with that. She just wanted me to mentor her. But then as she got you know wrapped up into it, and I didn't want to you know go any further with it. I wanted to fall back from her. That's when, next thing you know, she started posting stuff on Facebook. Uh, but then she took it down, you know, the same night after my attorney and my publicist called her. And I went and filed a restraining order. I'm trying to do everything I was trying to, you know, could do in a, in a safe to, way. To, to clear your name. Well, not to clear my name, just trying to protect myself. Because oh, okay. at the time, like I said, it was just Facebook stuff. I didn't care about who believed this shit. That's, it didn't matter to me. I'm a, pu I'm a public figure. Okay. Uh, and then when she seen that that didn't really get to me, the next thing I know, the boyfriend of hers and her came up with the idea. Let's, you know, go to District 2, where Officer Kim worked out of, and tell them 
he was stalking you. If you know me, if anybody knows me, like you don't even have to know me. You just follow me. Like I was presenting on the BET Awards. Like I don't, for one, I want to be single. Like, so, you know, and I don't have a problem with women. So stalking a female, especially her, is the last thing that I ever would have to do. So, but, you know, so they, they came and they arrested me. They put it all over the news. And then uh, after that, they decided, well, we want to dismiss the charges. I said, no, I begged my attorney. I said, do not let them drop these charges. My lawyer was like, well, if they dismiss it, then it's over. I said, no, it's not over. I spent 15 years building my brand to sit, to sit back and let the Cincinnati police and this trash bra, like, just gonna, just try to trash my name. So I don't want a dismissal. I want a trial. I got what I wanted. So they gave me a trial. I went to trial. So let me explain something to you. I'm a black man with a pass, with a criminal pass, with a son named Trey Pierre Hummins, with two Cincinnati police officers testifying against me in front of a white Republican judge. And I beat them hands down. See, what the, what the police didn't know, they didn't know that I had emails that, that, that read, oh, you can't run forever. I had emails that said, you must really hate me because you blocked me from Facebook and from, uh, from your cell phone. So, see, they didn't know that. But then when we showed that to the judge, the judge said, wait a minute, these emails don't read like a man pursuing a woman. They read like a woman that's bitter because the man doesn't want to have anything to do with her. And he gave me an acquittal, not guilty. See, that's what I wanted was a not guilty. I didn't want a dismissal. Okay. So where do you go from here? What are you doing now? Let our audience know. We know some of your history, but we want to know what is Ronald Hummins doing right now and how can we follow you? So while this was going on, it's what people don't know. I actually uh, I did a 48 hour hunger strike on the steps of the state house in December when it was super cold in Columbus to, uh, to try to raise some awareness around a bill that I created called the state of emergency on childhood trauma. So I'm actually pushing for Ohio to become the first state to declare a state of emergency on childhood trauma. Because when you start to understand childhood trauma and how it wires us and how it gives us a blueprint for our adult life, you'll start to understand why it's so critical. Right. So I, while all this was going on, I was doing my hunger strike. I got a lot of great attention on it. And from there, start connecting with different politicians. And now my bill is actually in the health committee and get ready to get signed into law. My bill will create what we, what one of the things that we're looking for is 317 million. That's going to go like you can't talk mental health without talking nutrition. So it's going to be some some clean food grocery stores. that's going to go in our communities um, and not trauma. Uh, you know, a lot of people talk about trauma informed. What we push is trauma, uh, uh, trauma resource. Right. So it's a lot of things. They can go to my website is www.ohiostateofemergency.com and get more information on it. I've been pushing major historic legislation. I've been invited also to the UN to speak to the UNCEF, that's the United Nations Children's Educational Fund, because if this thing gets adopted by the UN, it's going to be uh, uh, adopted nationally. And you also are a best on Netflix? Yes, I have a Netflix deal on my book, Diamond. Uh, Rotimi from Power, He, uh, he he's going to be playing me. Uh, if y'all know uh, his name, what's his name in the show? Andre. Andre. Andre from Power, he's going to be playing me. Uh, Common is going to be playing my father in it, so it's going to be a star-studded event. And also, not to mention, and we, we ain't going to lead us out, he was on Black Ink. He also did a tour, a, what, a tattoo blanket. Yeah, I remember seeing you on there, and you also did a tour, a book tour. A tour with Tracy Martin, Trayvon Martin's father. Oh, that's right. Trayvon Martin's father called you up. Mm -hmm. We decided to go do some speaking engagements, and while we were speaking engagement together, Black Ink Crew producer called and asked if we would come on there and they booked us to come on there. So I got the tattoo of uh, Trey and he got the tattoo of his Trey, Trey and Trey, Trey Von, Trey, uh, Trey Pierre. Uh, I was also a presenter on the BET Awards. Uh, that was what, in 2018, actually. I was on the Recently? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just making some big Just moves. great thing. You're making big moves. We are so glad to have you here with us. We're going to get back to the facts, fashion fix with Divine Lux. We are just so grateful that you came and you spilled your heart out to us. You told us a lot that we might have misconstrued ourselves. We're so glad that we're hearing it coming from your mouth and not from everyone else or social media. We thank you so much for coming. And hopefully you'll come back with us again. Absolutely. Thank you. Give it up. We'll be back with Fashion Fix, Divine Lux. Thank you.
Welcome back to your fashion fix. You are watching Fashion Talk. I'm your host, Miss Ebony J. And this show is being brought to you by Divine Lux Clothing and Apparel. Shout out to Lon Day. That was an amazing interview. To learn more about Mr. Ronald, make sure you go to OhioStateOfEmergency.com or you can actually go to his Facebook page that's tagged above. Now, you ready for your fashion fix? Get those cash apps ready. We're about to get to some more looks. My first model's coming with a nice... It's a nice, comfortable two-piece that you can wear, and it's stylish. You see how she's dressed it up with the heels? Look at that. That is beautiful. I'm loving it. If you like this look, it can be yours. All you have to do is send us your size in your cash app, and number 18 is the look. Go ahead and walk up there so they can see it, Mama. You got that thing. Beautiful. This look can be yours again. If you're just hanging out or you want to go somewhere and look so beautiful, this is that look. I love it. Beautiful. Now we have a king coming on through. Of course, he's styling and profiling. Is this a blazer? Ooh, number 50. If you like this blazer, again, if you just like to look nice, this material is nice and comfortable. Go ahead and walk up so they can see it. This blazer is available to you today. See your size. It can definitely be yours. I love it. You got your own style with this one. Don't want to wear something that everyone else has. That's the one. Come on, King. What you got for us? Ooh. Is this a two-piece? Okay, I like this. Keep the neck warm. You styling this thing. This is available if you need it, ladies, okay? What size what, what size is this? What's the number? Number four, a nice little two-piece. Go ahead, walk up there so they can see it. Your neck will be covered. You will be warm. This is the one. Again, Valentine's Day is coming up. You looking for a nice outfit for your king? This could be yours. Send us the size that he wear, number four today. Thank you. If you like this dress, you can get it to number 45. Go ahead, sing your size. This one can be yours as well. Come on now, beautiful, what you got? I love it. Yes, nice little date night, girls night. Just wanna step up and look right, that's the one. What's the number? Number six. Go ahead and walk up there so they can see you. Yes, that's the one, I love it. Gotta be the perfect size though, cause you know you wash it, boy. The, the thing don't work no more. <laughs> this is beautiful. Again, number six. If you like it, you can get it today. Send us the size that you need. Yes. Come on, beautiful. What you got? Oh, I love it. And work. And work. It's the coat. We got the coat and the full one piece. So this. Coat, jacket, was the jacket? Oh yes, it's a jacket, what number? Number 14, so if you like it, again, look at the color. It's designer, right, nice little jacket. You can get it, number 14. Now go ahead and let them see the full one piece. Yes, one piece available, number 60. This is the one, that's beautiful. I love it. Just give them a nice little tease, you hear me? They don't need it to see it all. Come on through. Again, what I love it about Divine Lux clothing is we have the nice fashionable looks, but we also have things that you can look fashionable in and be comfortable. Yes, this is the one. I love it. Yellow is the color, right? What number is that? 35. If you like this one, you can get it. Most definitely you can get it today. 35. Send us your size. It's comfortable, ain't it? Yes, yeah, see, that's what we like, to give you comfort and style. Come on now, what you got? Ooh, yes, I love it. Look at that, that dress. So what number is the dress top? Number three, if you like this dress top, you can get it today. Look at that, it has a nice flow. And is the pants available as well? The pants, let's see those. Those are the shorts. It's a full outfit together. So number three is for that. So what's the other number for? Number 80. 
Is that the shoes? Oh my goodness, the shoes. If you want the shoes, you can get the shoes today as well. Number 80. All you have to do is send us the size you want. Those are cute. I love it. And so if you like that top dress, as you can see, she said it's a two piece. Both of the pieces come together. And that is number three. I love it. If you love it too, it could be yours today. Once again, this dress that you see on me is number 45. Send us the size that you like and you can get it today. We're going to go ahead and bring back out our CEO who's wearing a custom look. Every week we give you a fix, but we like to keep it real, keep you guessing, right? And so this one is a custom look. If you like it, you can get it, the hat. Of course, you see how the shoulders is. Got a nice, you know, you just... Boom, they don't know what, what's going to pop out, right? And then look, you want to show off just a little bit, wear a nice little cute boost with it. This is the look. I don't know where you're going, but you can go anywhere in this joint, okay? It's a custom look. If you like it and want it, have interest in it, all you have to do is cash app us your deposit on this look because it's a custom piece. It costs a little bit more. That's right. We appreciate you, Miss Kim. I, I do want to say that this show has been brought to you by AJ Souls and those shoes that the young lady had on number 80 those are by AJ Souls as well thank you all for coming to the show this week of course you never know what you're going to get on fashion talk clothing divine luxe clothing and apparel we're going to meet on the couch and do our toast are we going to come up here and do it I need all my ladies to come and join me we close the show together as a family. Give us some hearts. Give us some thumbs up right now. The family is here. I want to thank you all for tuning in to Fashion Talk. And um, thank you for our co-hosts and our host, Ebony J. And thank you for our special guest, Ronald Hummus. And make sure you look him up and follow him and watch that movie, y'all, on Netflix. So as we close, we always want to give a toast to love, to fashion talk, to divine lux. And we want to let you know that we are not just a clothing line. We are a... Movement. Movement, baby. Thank you, y'all. See you next week. It's the vine.